Okay, so I'm Chris Gessick. You can read that better than I can probably say it. And I was going to talk about power vampires in the home. This is kind of like the second half of Victoria Chen's talk this morning. I don't know if anybody remembers this type of technology here. This is, remember these? Back then, on was on and off was off. You had a knob, you turned it on and off. Now, your TV's on standby. It's just waiting for that remote signal. So this, thing, this is happening because that TV is always on, waiting to be turned on. So what I'm going to do is, here's a kilowatt P4400 meter. This thing can, is what we use. You can buy these at Menard for around $20, and we 11% off this week. That's about the cheapest you're going to get. So we use these a lot in our department. So I use this kilowatt meter. I went around, and I'm actually looking at vampire energy consumption here. Remember, volts times amps is equal to volt amperes, so I can't just clip an amp meter in, and put it, measure my current and my voltage and multiply them together. I need to take into account power factor. And that's what this meter does. It will measure true wattage. That's energy consumed, not just volt amperes. So make sure when you're measuring this, you want to make sure you're measuring wattage. Like I said, but you know, the uh, these potential power vampires are normally, they're just plugged in and they're not on, they're not, when they're not in use, they're not turned on and off. These vampires are drinking power even when they're apparently asleep. So here's a, something that has an on and off switch. This just happens to be my old handy HP laser jet printer at home. The reason why I bring this up is because my wife forgets to turn it off. She leaves it on saying, it's going to go to sleep anyway. Well, when it's asleep, it's still drawing five watts of power. So here's a potential vampire in my own kitchen where I have my printer. Here's a microwave oven. This thing is over 10 years old. So I was wondering, this is an old microwave oven. How much is it using for me to display that little clock up there? It's taking about three watts also, even when it's turned off. Here's a brand new microwave oven we bought in our department. It's a, an Oster brand. I think it's about a month old. Again, it has the LED clock on it. How much do you think that thing is drawing when it's turned off? It's only using half a watt of energy when it's, when it's sitting in standby. In our same kitchen at OSU, there's one of these Kerr rig co coffee machines. You put the little K-cup in it, fill up our landfills with wasted material. That machine, when it's sitting off, is still drawing three watts of power. Here's an ancient Windows laptop. It had Windows XP on it. It's an old HP DV1000 computer. And I thought, this thing would be a real power vampire here. It only draws four-tenths of a watt when its lid's closed, the battery is charged, but it's still on. So that's not so bad. Here's an ancient Macintosh we have in our department. It's an iMac from about, I'm going to say it's over 10 years old. When that thing goes to sleep, it's drawing 1.3 watts. So if I compare it to a brand new iMac, I'm going to say brand new because Apple, this is the new iMac. They haven't built a new one since 2015. So this is a new iMac. It's drawing zero watts. That sounds really strange. What I found on this thing is that most of the time it's drawing zero watts. And every 10 to 20 seconds, it'll take a little pulse, a little sip of energy, probably recharge some capacitors inside, and then idle again. And I think that's what's going on with this new equipment because I went... Here's a brand new Dell monitor I connected to that same computer. So it's a 40, a 2417 monitor from Dell. It's doing the same thing. When it's on, but in standby mode, it's essentially drawing zero power now. Every 20 seconds or so, you get a little pulse, and it recharges the capacitor inside. Here's a monster 70-inch Vizio television monitor that's hanging in one of the researcher's labs where he displays his grain data. And I thought, oh, here's a good one. This is going to be sucking down all sorts of power. Another zero-watt energy consumer turned on in standby. I was wondering about some safety equipment like GFCIs. I read somewhere that GFCIs are really sucking down a lot of power. This is a GFCI from about 1978. This is when you plug into the line cord. These were not required at the time from home. This thing uses 2.6 watts when it's just sitting there protecting you. But that energy is protecting you. It's a safety issue. Here's a brand new uh, Pass and Seymour GFCI like in Mountain Your Electrical Box. So this is a new version of that same GFCI. It's drawing four-tenths of a watt. 
Here's an arc fault circuit interrupter. This would be mounted into a circuit panel. It was drawing, it draws one watt when I measured it. Here's a cheapo knockoff iPhone charger. And I thought, this is you know, something they picked it up on eBay or something really cheap. You plug it into a fully charged iPod, it draws again zero watts. Very efficient. I'm kind of surprised by some of these numbers. You're over at the Encore house. Here's the Caseta smart bridge that was allowing us to talk to those lights through the Pico controls. So this is a brand new device and it was drawing one watt all the time. Over in the Encore house, we have wireless. This is the Asus wireless network, the access point sitting right there by the computer. I couldn't believe this thing. It's drawing 11 watts all the time. And this is the type of thing that's on 24 hours. This is the real vampire here. We also have to connect the Encore house to the 4-H building here. We do that through a power over ethernet to a, a black box ethernet bridge. That's drawing four watts. Here's at home, I'm using a wireless bridge too and you can see the meter's up there plugged in. It's made by Hawking. I'm using one and a half watts. I find that the computer network equipment tends to be wildly different and probably the older stuff draws more than the new stuff. I like, I do a lot of baking, I have a large family. I mounted, somebody gave me an old electric range, I can put it in the basement, you can see it there in the basement. The clock is on, I thought, oh, here comes another energy hog. Drawing about one watt, so when I go down the basement, I can see the time on the clock. I can probably pull the plug also, because I use it around Thanksgiving and Christmas. I installed a Renai water heater, this is a tankless water heater, so I don't need to use natural gas to run a pilot, turn on the water, you get hot water, no standby water, and I was wondering what this was, so I measured it. That thing is using five watts. Well, this thing is probably getting out close to 10 years, so maybe they're getting better, but I was surprised the cost of convenience, I'm not going down the basement every morning before I take the shower and plug it in. I'm using five watts of power to keep that thing in standby mode. And then I thought, oh, my old, this old gas furnace is 20 plus years old. You go down here, you hear the thing buzzing because the transformer, the 40 volt ampere transfer in that cabinet, it buzzes like a banshee down there. Thought, this is a real energy hog. It's only using one watt. I decided to find out what my home is really using. So I can't, okay, I have a dozen GFCIs. I have a couple of microwave, these little things. I'm probably using 50 watts of vampire power at any point. So I went out. My electric meter is on the back of the house. Down there is the KH factor. You can use that number to calculate wattage using the meter. So I went through my house and I unplugged all the typical appliances. I pulled all the refrigerators out, all the freezers, Anything that would be generating or pulling energy. So I'm just now measuring my background energy use. And I told my wife, lie in bed this morning. Don't go in, don't turn any lights. I'm going to do a, a measurement here. Here's the equation you use. So the KH value is the watt hours per revolution of the meter. And I plugged in my number. So I, the meter was 7.2 for the KH value. It took me 240 seconds to get one revolution of that dial. And like I found out I'm using 108 watts of power when theoretically nothing in the house is on. So I guess some points to consider here. I think newer items tend to consume less power than the older ones. I saw that in the microwave ovens. I saw that with the computers. And I think computer network equipment are the hidden power vampires, at least in my house, when you have them in quantity. Because I have at least two, two network, I have a bridge, and I have two Ethernet hubs in there. And I think the same thing's happening over at the Encore house. This was a hard slide for me to come up with because I tried to figure out what my cost of electricity is. I'm paying five and a half cents per kilowatt hour for 100% renewable through AEP here in Columbus. If you double the cost of electricity to account for distribution and transmission, then these other little things they talk, tack in, I'm paying actually 17 cents per kilowatt hour. So I can see that one watt a phantom power is costing me probably a dollar forty-nine. Ten watts of phantom power is about fourteen eighty-nine, and I noticed that this differs. I looked at my neighbor's electric bill, and their cost was twenty cents per hour. I don't know what was the difference. They use more electricity, but they were kind enough to give me the electric bill for me to do the analysis. I guess the question is, what's an appropriate cost for the convenience and safety? I like GFCIs protecting me if I'm going to be dipping my feet in the water and grab an electrical appliance or a power tool. And are these, are these major expenses compared to other uses? 
I think so the power consumption with these, uh, these vampires are normally small, but they're on 24-7. That's probably where we're having the problem. I think maybe that we could probably save a lot of more energy by looking at our big power gulpers and making them more efficient. And that might be more co a cost-effective means for saving energy in the home. So with this little bit of information I go you, I hope you can go out there and slay some vampires. <laughs> Thanks. You want to take questions now or hold to the end? I don't know. If you have questions, I can take questions. Yeah, let me take a couple of questions. Are there any questions? Or just by way of comment, uh, for those of you that are associated with OSU, the Office of Student Life owns about 30 kilowatt meters available for student use. And I've written a lab exercise for a general education science course on how to use them and how to look for vampires. Okay, well that's... So if anybody might be in a position to use them, be happy to help. They're really fun. Yeah, it, it, it was it was interesting. For the last five weeks, I've been just plugging in and monitoring power around the house, trying to find out what was really drawing it. Any other questions? Right behind you. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm on now. Uh, so, uh, have you considered any of the, the newer energy monitors? Uh, hey, it is working. Okay. You when you mean a newer energy model? Or? So I have two on my house. I have a curb and I have a sense, and then I've also played with an e gauge uh, that one of my clients has. Have you played with anything like that? Yet? I haven't played with things. I typically get the mailings for the engineers. You know, you buy this power mo PMI power monitoring equipment. Power monitoring is instrumentation, and this, these things are thousands of dollars. You can put these coils around, and it does very accurate. These things are are claimed to be two percent accurate. We use these in the lab. For we, when we teach electricity and electronics, we have found them to be quite accurate. We compare them to real measurements. Remember, a complex waveform, it's not a, these are oftentimes not simple sine waves coming into these switching power supplies. These things do a really good job despite the fact that it's getting harmonics and things. I was surprised at how well these do for, like I said, 20 bucks, save 11% this week at Menards. I might go buy another one just for myself. Okay. So I, I found that I like the Sense monitor the best of them, and it's the least expensive too. It's three hundred dollars, and it only has two CP clamps, so you only do it on the two mains coming in, and then it, it kind of sort of senses the different things that are in there. It also thinks that my coffee maker is my dishwasher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got some issues still, um, but uh, uh, it, for figuring out what your base load is, the one hundred eight watts is actually quite good. So at my house, it's right around two hundred, something like mm -hmm. that. Standby power, that's really not bad. Yeah. I think one thing I, over in the Encore house, we do have some clamp on meters in there. We monitor the power usage and it's online. The problem I had with the Encore house, it's measuring volt amperes. Remember, a reactive load, capacitive or inductive, will draw power, but then it returns the power back to the utility. So it actually consumes no power. I can take a capacitor and put on a power, on a power cord, and it'll draw power. I can put it on here and it'll read that I'm drawing volt amperes with no watts because it's a, it's a reactive load, and I think that over in Encore, the, the system is about seven years old over there. They didn't, they didn't get, they're not getting, they're getting volt amperes. They're not getting power factor in the equation. That's why I like these, because they actually do true wattage, and you can actually measure the power factor by pushing the right button. I do have to say, those for 20 bucks are really a fun little toy. So particularly the little kids. Uh, well, not too little, but uh, you know, old enough that you trust them to put stuff in. My daughter's three, no. no. <laughs> but when she's six or seven, don't Yeah. Know. Any other questions? Thank you, Bruce. So after a very successful morning presentation, we're having Nate Adams come back for an evening or afternoon presentation.